high was the limit for Chairman Vivek Chand Segal when he laid the foundation of the Samvardhana Madhusan Group in the mid 1970s with just rupees thousand in his pocket. Of this, his mother contributed the major chunk of rupees six hundred and thirty-three, which gave birth to the company's name Madhusan. At a time when other fledgling auto component companies mushroomed around the Maruti Udyog business in the 80s era, Segal expanded his horizon to foreign shores and never stopped growing. Tapping joint ventures, mergers and acquisitions to catapult himself on the world stage. Today, with a slew of over 370 companies spread across 37 countries and 25 joint ventures under its belt, the Samvardhana Madhusan Group ranks amongst the largest auto component players in the world. With a top line of over $9.1 billion or about Rs. 58,000 crore posted in the last financial year, the group has now set its target on achieving a revenue of $26 billion or about Rs. 167,000 crore by 2020. Of this, the lion's share will come from its listed entity, Madison Sumi Systems. That's not all. Segal plans to float a new healthcare vertical as part of the group's diversification and add 16 new greenfield facilities to boost its auto domain as it continues to chug ahead to fresher pastures in the future. Mr. Segal recently talked to ET Auto's editor, Dabile Khan, about his journey so far and future plans. Hello and welcome to ET Auto. Today we have a very interesting story of an 18-year-old boy who has started his business with mother. And that's how the mother son Sumi was born in 1975. The investment was rupees 1000. And today they are targeting to achieve $26 billion of turnover. Let me welcome Mr. V.C. Sagal, Chairman, Mother Son Group. Welcome to ET Auto, sir. Thank you what so a much. journey over four <laughs> decades. It's been almost jet motion that you have set. You have always said that you don't set up any benchmark because you will limit yourself to that. How has this journey been? And when you first five, 10 years, when you set up a, a revenue target of doubling your revenue, tripling your their revenue, how was the journey? Did people really get convinced that you will achieve that? Because this is something that was always novice and exorbitant target that you had put on. I think uh, uh, I wish I could take the credit that yes, I thought so and this happened and all that. But to be honest with you, uh, nothing of that was there. Uh, a lot was about survival. The first 15, 20 years was all about survival. I think the first 15, 20 years was all about learning. Uh, I was very lucky to get uh, some amazing customers who could teach me as well and do business with them as well. Uh, I was furiously lucky to get Sumitomo as a teacher. Uh, I think that changed the whole uh, game completely. Uh, Maruti Suzuki, their focus on the vendors and Sumitomo son's uh, focus on me as, an, as a partner uh, was a uh, double uh, gain for me. Uh, I think uh, nobody really plans this kind of a huge growth or something like that. But uh, something very interesting was happening. If you remember, when Maruti Suzuki came in, their first year uh, uh, advice to us was to make 20,000 cars. That's it. 20,000 cars, if you're going to make, the whole joint venture was set up on that basis. And then, now they're doing 3 million cars. So obviously, it's one hell of a change. But I think the main driver of this particular uh, stupendous growth, or what we call a uh, big hairy uh, goal that was set, was I think Maruti was the, was the real protagonist of that. Uh, same was with Hero Honda at that time, same was with almost all the car makers that were coming in and things like that. So I think we were, we became used to uh, looking at big targets uh, and things like that. All we did was we cut the length in the whole thing. Instead of looking at 20 years or 30 years, we started looking at five years. 
And the reason we chose five was because a model technically lasted about five years, not more than that. So that was the reason we, we chose five. But that has stood by us phenomenally. I mean, think about it. In uh, 1993, when we went public, our top line was only 2.2 million US dollars. That's all. And uh, we raised, if I'm not wrong, close to about $700,000 from the, from the public at that time. And uh, today we are about uh, almost 9.2. If you extrapolate the six months, we're almost about $10 billion. We're looking at uh, 18 billion for the group with, uh, with a 40% growth. And we're of course looking at uh, 26 billion for the whole group. And uh, we don't feel scared about it. We don't feel intimidated by those numbers. So those kind of growth has become norm at Madhasan Group now. It's not Madhasan uh, Sumi that came along with Maruti Suzuki. There were four, five other companies that uh, started working for Maruti Suzuki. But we see they have not gone to this extent. What really made you different from them and what really helped you grow so faster? Because those companies are still limited within the country, within India, or they have a small operations overseas. But Mothers and Sumi is not today an Indian company only, but it has taken brand India overseas and it has done so well. Your uh, largest share of revenue comes from Germany, Europe, so developed market like this. What really helped you? I think the basic core teaching what Maruti Suzuki did for us or which uh, the Hondas and uh, the Yamahas and all these people, what they did for us was very core manufacturing because they wanted to give the Indian customer the best. Uh, we were used to rather mediocre uh, in, in the beginning, but with the coming and the advent of Marutis and the other cars that came in, the bikes that came in, uh, we were treated to something exceptional. Uh, what Motherson focused on, one, we focused only on OEMs. We didn't focus in the aftermarket because that uh, sent the wrong signals to the uh, production plants. While we were doing that, we became very close to the German car makers, the American car makers, and things like that. So this allowed us to uh, uh, be handpicked by them and taken to Europe. Okay, can you solve a problem there now? Because you've solved my problems in India. We did uh, more, we had more than 40 joint ventures at a particular time. So uh, the ability to satisfy them in a different country was something which, uh, which uh, augured very well for Mother Son. And I don't uh, really have a comment on the other guys, what they did. I'm sure they did something which was their focus. But uh, Motherson realized that it was 552 countries that became India. Okay. So, you know, if I had to go to another country, we, we are already used to it. In fact, in India, when we talk to a room full of people, actually more than four or five don't come from the same uh, princely state, if you come, uh, start counting it that way. So I think uh, we are very used to different cultures, different uh, people, and I look at that as a huge strength for Motherson. So. The joke in Mother Son is, you know, we were 552 countries. What's another 40, 50 countries for us? <laughs> so that's a good, really good. Still, India is a very diversified. You have culture, different culture, language and everything. If you understood that, that's how we see most of the overseas company coming to India. They don't find it so easy to do well. But Mother Son has been because they, you have already struggled and fought all kind of battle. So it was easy, easy. For you, you just mentioned that focus on OEM was one of the key driver. What were the other reasons uh, that helped Mothers and Sumi, you know? If I think you the, are to count them. We always tried and we still try to make our own way. The reason why we don't uh, want to benchmark against somebody else, because then in that case, it kills your creativity, the ability to think differently. Uh, Mother Son has been very lucky. We have an amazing team. Uh, we have one of the lowest uh, attrition rates in the industry. Uh, once a person has uh, uh, joined Mother Son, he is so excited, <laughs> he doesn't want to leave Mother Son. So it's a great place to be. Uh, on the other side, if a person leaves Mother Son, he can't come back into Mother Son. So uh, we are very loyal to the people who stay back in Mother Son. And I think. Uh, definitely, if you have jumping jacks, then you are doing an injustice to the people who are working with you. 
So very focused uh, way of looking at uh, production, very focused way of looking at uh, these. You see, normally what happens is people are producing, if something is a little bit up and down, they say, okay, fine, we can sell it in the, op you know, the market or whatever. But not Munson. We need to have uh, a very strong focus on QC, DDM, SES, which is quality, cost, design, development, management, safety, and environment, and sustainability. So I think it changes the whole attitude of the people. And the customers really appreciated that. And that's the reason they keep asking us to do more. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you go to this country and all that? Think about it. You know, we, when we went to South Africa, an American car company told Mother Son, an Indian company, to go to South Africa to solve a problem there. So, you know, the dynamics are quite different over here. And we're doing very successfully with God's grace. We have two plants in South Africa. One is in Joburg, one is in Durban. So it's, it's the ability to be fearless and to go with an open mind rather than be caught in, uh, you know, what people say, why you should not do it. We always look for a reason why we should do so you have acquired companies which were larger than your size also. So was there no uh, hesitation or in terms of any kind of uh, thinking that it's a huge risk I'm going to take? Uh, how much of uh, such, you know, bold step has helped you? So, you know, there's one life, you know, you, you don't have 20 lives or something like that. And uh, I've always maintained that acquisition is a double-edged knife, you know, you goes in cutting, it comes out cutting also. Uh, so one has to be very careful why he's buying it. That, that why, that first why is a very vital why. A uh, lot of people buy it for the wrong reasons. You know, they'll increase their market share, all these kind of things and all that. We always look for an acquisition where the customer wants us to do that. So in such a scenario, uh, it, it always augurs well because the karmika is also very interested that you survive. It's also very important for the people of that company that they, uh, they get a second chance. And I've uh, seen in my life that if people are given a second chance, very rarely they don't succeed. Hmm. So that's the mantra. Oh, what drives your decision uh, basically in your uh, personal life? Your life is, you travel a lot, you have operations across the world. And even in, in India also you have in Chennai and different cities. How do you manage your work-life balance? Because that's very important <laughs> nowadays. You always look fresh, you know. <laughs> Whenever I come to see you, you are as fresh as ever. Trust me, uh, me and my son, both of us, we don't run any company. So, uh, you know, we could be sitting and chatting for 10 hours. Unless there's an emergency somewhere, my phone won't ring. So I think the first uh, key uh, decision that an entrepreneur has to make, is he the entrepreneur or is he the professional who's going to run the company? I think uh, I have yet to meet a professional who doesn't want to do well in his life. Uh, very rare uh, uh, have I come across a person who might feel, oh, you know, he doesn't have that growth uh, thing inside him. I have met a lot of professionals who have not been empowered had you empowered them, they would have done phenomenally, you know. So I personally believe to have a professional who wants to do well and you empower him, I can't see a reason why he would fail. Uh, the same goes for all the associates, same goes for all the support staff and everything. So we uh, have made sure that our entrepreneurship and management are two different things. We work together with them Wherever they hesitate to take a risk decision or something, we are there to sponsor them and say, no, no, don't worry, we are behind you. And what your decision you're taking is correct. So I think a good mix between the professionals and the entrepreneur is the answer to the game. So there has been some talk about Motherson Group that they started in India, but they are uh, expanding more overseas. Uh, what you have to say about that? Yeah, I think it's true to some extent, but uh, it doesn't undermine a particular country or uh, it doesn't undermine a particular product that we are making. I think what is important is Motherson's growth story is about increasing content per car. So we have never focused on a particular component per se and then we want market share globally on that or something like that. 
So what we are saying is, uh, if we are supplying $100 to the car, can we do $200? It's already 100% growth. So the thought process was quite different right from the beginning. And this actually happened in 94, 95, when between the government and uh, Suzuki San, there were some problems that were going on, and Maruti actually declined for a year, two years. Mm -hmm. We got the biggest, uh, how do you say, scare at that time. So what we started to do was we said, okay, fine, the top line is not growing, the, the car numbers are not growing, why not increase the content per car? So we started supplying plastic parts, we started supplying other things and all that. And that actually was fantastic for Motherson because we had just listed in the stock exchange and uh, instead of supplying say $10, we were supplying $20 or $50, whatever. But it didn't matter really whether the GDP was up or it was down, the car industry grew 1%, 2% negative, it didn't make a difference to us because we were going positive. But then you can imagine when the car industry started to rise, we were having geometrical progression over there. And that is the only thing that we have followed. We, we, we have a clear uh, policy which says 3CX15, which means no country, no component, no uh, car maker, more than 15% of our turnover. So you diversification is the name of the game. <laughs> uh, you recently also had a similar, the one you mentioned with Volkswagen. Volkswagen being your one of the largest customer, they had a very rough phase. And of course, there was an impact on your group also maybe minor, how did you deal with this? Or you did not have at all any uh, impact on yourself? No, we actually didn't. We, we kept saying that it has no impact on, on us because we were in no way connected with the engine. So even now with all this electric vehicle and all these things happening, Motherson is agnostic to the engine. So uh, we really was very surprised when people said that, you know, Volkswagen is your biggest group, uh, in this, which is a fact. But, uh, you know, they had seven brands. So I didn't know why they were only looking at Volkswagen as, as a group, as a shareholder. But their uh, market share also increased. Yes, increased. So, In fact, right. uh, as I said, you know, there is nothing as uh, good or bad publicity. Every publicity is publicity. So <laughs> they actually increased their, uh, uh, maybe they increased their um, uh, uh, discounts. But today they are the world's largest car maker. They've been so for the last three years. Uh, you are now a global player and uh, automotive industry is standing at the door of a big shift that is going to happen, uh, be it policy, be it technology, autonomous, electric vehicle. How do you see the landscape of automotive industry 10 years down the line? We are talking about electric vehicle. Do you think we'll be really able to have those many electric vehicles by 2030 or 40? How do you look at it? I think this? if they produce it, and the people want to buy it, definitely it will be there. But I uh, find it hard to believe that people will be able to compress time. Uh, you know, we, we looked at all the reports that are coming across the globe. Nobody's talking before 2030, 2035, things like these to start showing up. I think somewhere around uh, 2040, 2045, if the current trend goes on, you might have a 50-50 case of IC engines and electric engines. But you know, in today's world, a lot can happen in, uh, in, in 30 years. So I really don't uh, think too much about it. Motherson focuses on a five-year plan. I can guarantee you by 2020 it won't happen. Rest, I'll tell you in 2020, whether 2025 it'll happen or not. So your journey has been really, you know, uh, uh, a subject of interest for the entire industry, be it automotive industry or up. So I'll, I'll move towards uh, your journey and we'll have more questions towards it. So uh, when it comes to your work so far you have done uh, in this space, automotive space or as an entrepreneur, uh, what are the decisions that you regret or you think that you would have done it differently that would have helped? And what are two, three decisions that you think has helped you where you are today? I'm a firm believer that things happen at their pace and also they don't happen uh, at all at many times. Uh, if you start regretting, then there was a lack of effort on your part. In Motherson's thinking, full effort is full victory. So whether the result is good or bad, that's the way uh, the thing has to be. I'm okay with that. So to name regrets, uh, actually I don't have any. 
uh, I have a lot of gratefulness. I'm very, very grateful to people. And whenever I've looked back and a thing has not happened the way we thought it would, uh, I'm grateful that it didn't happen because after five years I come to realize actually it was good it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so you have always been very rightly, you know, um, far-sighted or your decision has always been uh, great, you think. In your personal life, you are a devout, uh, you know, admirer of Krishnaji. So how much he has contributed or his uh, uh, philosophy or what has helped you? Well, I just actually quoted him. Full effort is full victory, is he tells uh, Arjun that. So, uh, you know, in, in, in your own way, you will always be influenced by something. I was always very much influenced by Gita. It's only 700 verses and not uh, a huge, uh, you know, five, six hundred page something over there. Uh, it's very simple if you understand it. If you don't understand it, it's still okay to, to, to go through life just, just reading that particular thing again and again. So I'm not a pundit or something like that, but I have seen that if you are uh, doing the good thing, you're doing the right thing, you're not uh, hurting anybody, you won't go wrong. And uh, I'm the best proof you have that it works. <laughs> uh, let's come back to what um, in the last three, four years we have seen a lot of changes has come in India as well in terms of policy, talking about GST, uh, talking about, uh, uh, let's talk about GST. How do you see that uh, the decision of bringing GST and do you think it will have uh, uh, a negative impact or positive impact going in the long term? Uh, what's your look at? There is no doubt that GST has all the ingredients to make growth a reality in the future. Uh, whenever a, a country or a business or something like that is not growing, uh, there are multiple chances that it will vanish. Uh, the best lesson to learn is that from the nature. When you look at a tributary, a small trickle of water coming down the mountains, a lot more growth happens and then it becomes a big river to go into the sea. So if you don't have that, the river disappears somewhere in the desert or something. So I think uh, uh, growth is vital. GST is an amazing engine for growth. The only thing is people are trying to get into something new and change is always very resistive. Uh, people resist it, people think, oh, it's unnecessary and all that. But I'm sure in the coming one, two, three years, you will see the real benefit of GST coming when the prices of everything is going to fall because you are having that additive taxes all across. So I'm sure people will understand uh, how important this is. So whatever pain is happening today, if, if there is pain, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, no issues at all. We are very, very happy. In fact, our software company is one of the protagonists for GST. So. Uh, we, we had no problems. We were absolutely ready in time. We are working okay. But I, I believe uh, there must be some pain in the system, otherwise why would this noise come? But if there is, I think the government has to look at that, and they are looking at that. But watch in two, three years, India is going to be a phenomenal place. The government is talking about implementation of BS6 by 2020. At the same time, uh, we are also talking about all electric vehicle by 2030. So do you think, it, is it not going to give an extra burden on industry when it comes to investment <coughs> and the kind of uh, shift that is going to take place? Do you think it's a correct timeline or? You know, uh, uh, as of now, I told you we are agnostic to the engine, so it doesn't make so much of a difference as I'm far as we are concerned. overall industry? Yeah, yeah. overall industry, uh, it's very hard to say. See, today, one big difference has happened about automotives which was not there, say, 40 years ago. Uh, 40 years ago, cars were considered a luxury, per se. Today, it is a necessity. So, uh, if the price goes up by another 10%, 15%, if you got to travel, you will take it. So, I don't see uh, that uh, so much of a problem. There will be a resistance for a quarter or two quarters, maybe. But overall, I've not seen that. I've seen the fuel prices going when I had a bike in uh, 70s uh, go from 80 pesa a litre to now it's about 75 bucks or something. Yeah. So, you know, that's 100 times growth already. Uh, it doesn't make so much of a difference. People move along, they understand and they go on. 
There is a lag which is there. I'm not so worried about that. How do you want Mother's and Subi to be known in coming future? Right now you call yourself a solution provider to the OEMs. How, and do you think that the role of Mother Sansumi is going to expand further or do you think that is the area you will continue to focus? Yeah, I think at this moment Mother Sun with God's grace is about I think the 23rd largest automotive component group in the world. Uh, definitely, if we hit our targets by 2020, we probably will come in the top 10, 12, 15, I don't know where. I think in 2020, we will introduce you to the new verticals that might be coming in Mother Sun. And uh, um, believe me, there's a lot of work going on in those particular things. Uh, these are exciting places, exciting times. And um, I would want Mother Sun to be, to be known as a trustful company, a company that you can trust. And uh, we've lived up to that particular expectations from all our stakeholders. So you're talking about new vertical. Is it going to be an automotive <laughs> space? Or <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it'll be probably away from automotive. It'll be away from automotive. But uh, as I said, you know, the, these uh, seeds have already been sown uh, some three, four years ago. And they're Can all coming up. Can you give us some uh, hint, more clarity on that? No, I think um, these are uh, a little bit onto the... Uh, uh, onto the uh, uh, to the medical devices, not okay. medicines per se, but medical devices. Uh, we we are already very well known for retimer.com and uh, thims. Uh, these are things which help you not to sleep and to put you to sleep, depending upon which way your yeah. jet lag or your uh, thing is. But I believe uh, there is a lot more that Mother Sun can bring in because today we are in a very interesting situation. We are in 37 countries globally. And there is a lot of research and things that are happening. Since we are tied up to the universities all across the globe, it brings in tremendous amount of power to Mother Sun to introduce new technologies which would help you, which would actually uh, uh, augment your life, your, uh, your uh, health, your uh, uh, cars, everything, every aspect about you. So I feel very excited about that. So you were uh, so far focusing on keeping people safe on the road. Now you are trying to making people, you know, healthier and live healthy life. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you, Dabi.